In this lesson, we'll look at acceleration of a double inclined plane and considering friction. The question reads, consider a double inclined plane with angles, masses, and coefficients of friction as shown in the figure. Calculate the acceleration of the system. So as you can tell, this question is a lot more complicated than what we worked on in our previous video. The first thing that I will do is find out the force due to gravity for both of these masses and write them down because they will come in handy later on. So the force due to gravity is the force being pulled directly downwards. And we use Newton's second law where we have F is equal to MA, F stands for force, mass times acceleration. So the mass according to this diagram is 6.0 and the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8. Multiplying these two out, you can use your calculator, six times 9.8 gives us 58 decimal eight Newtons. I'll do the same thing for this one. I'll use the color orange. So I have F is equal to MA nine times 9.8. And that gives us 88.2. Now, the next thing that I will do is break these vectors down into their components. So we have an X and Y component for each of these. If I break this down into two vectors, I get this as my x component and that as my y component and the same thing can be said about this one. And these components are actually very important for us to solve the problem. So let's begin over here. Let's say I wanted to find out the magnitude of this y component for the first mass. The way I will do that is by using trigonometric functions. I'll make an illustration here so that you can see it clearly. And if this is 30 degrees from here to here, and extending this line down, you can see that it's a 90 degree angle. So if that's 30, that's 90, this right here has to be 60. Now why is that important? Well, let's say that I took this vector and I placed it right here. We now have another 90 degree triangle. And in case you can't see it, since there's so much going on, let me redraw it for you. So we have one line like this, another like that, and the 90 degrees right here, and that was the vector going directly down. So we have a 90 degree triangle. This is 60, 90, and 30. Now using what I know about trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, I am looking for that one. And remember, this corresponds to that, okay? So if I wanna find out what that is, I can use the 60 degree angle that I found, or 30, it's up to you, to find out what that is. That's the opposite relative to 60. We already know the magnitude of that vector. We found out it was 58.8. So opposite and hypotenuse is sine. Sine 60 opposite is what we're looking for. So I'll represent it as OPP. And then we have 58.8. Solving for OPP, we get that magnitude. So sine 60 times 58.8 gives us 50.9, 50.9 newtons. That is the magnitude of that vector. I need to also find out the magnitude of this vector using the same sort of idea. I'll be using cosine this time, cosine 60, and cosine, that's adjacent. That's what we're looking for now, this one. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Hypotenuse we know to be 58.8. And by calculating this, 58.8 times cosine 60, I end up with 29.4 newtons. So adding these two components together, we end up with the resultant vector. We have to do this all over again for this mass, but rather than wasting your time, I'll just have the numbers prepared for you already. So what I'll be looking for is this component and that component, their magnitudes, because what we do with these numbers, I'll discuss afterwards. We just are finding them out for now. So the X and Y components should be both 62 Newtons. So if you did the calculation just like how we did here, you should end up with this being 62 Newtons and that one being 62 Newtons. So I'll say that this is the X component and that's the Y component, I'll rewrite it. Now, the reason why we find this information is because the coefficient of friction will actually act on 
this vector, the one that is perpendicular to the surface. And the one that was perpendicular to the surface, for here it doesn't matter since they're both 62. So you take whatever is perpendicular to the surface, let's just call it this one right here, and you multiply it by the coefficient of friction. The coefficient of friction here is 0 0.16. Remember, it's the one that is perpendicular to the surface. That's the component that you use. So for this one, it was 50.9. We will be multiplying that number by its coefficient of friction being 0 0.3. So let's multiply these out, and I hope it's not getting too messy for you. 50.9 times 0 0.3 gives us 15.27 newtons. Let's multiply these. 62 times 0 0.16. And that gives us a total of, let's say, 10 newtons. Now at this stage, we need to make an assumption as to where the mass will be moving. Will the mass be moving clockwise or counterclockwise? Based on the assumption that you make, the equation that we will generate next to solve for the acceleration and tension might change. So you would have to interpret it accordingly. So let's make the assumption that it's going to the right. And you know that your assumption is correct if after you create the equations that relate these two masses, the acceleration is positive. Because these two masses are connected through one cord, they share one acceleration and the tension along this wire is the same everywhere. Let's represent an equation that relates the acceleration and tension for this mass first. It doesn't matter which one you choose first, but let's just choose this one. We have the magnitude along the plane. We found out that it was 62 minus the tension and minus what we found here when we multiplied 62 times 0 0.16. That's 10. And that is equal to the mass Remember, we're using F is equal to MA, right? That is the force, is equal to the mass of 9 times an acceleration that we are looking for. The second equation will be T minus this magnitude, the one for this vector, which was 29.4 minus the vector that was perpendicular to the plane which we found to be 15.27. That's when we took into account the coefficient of friction. So 15.27, let me just write down 15.3. If you're taking into account significant figures, it's going to affect you at the very end, but I'm just trying to show you the math and the science involved. Its mass was six times the acceleration that we are looking for. Now it's a matter of solving for A and T. And for that, let me just simplify equation number one. If we simplify it, we have 62 minus 10, that's 52 minus t is equal to 9a. I will take this t here and this 9a over here where I have 52 minus 9a is equal to t. I'll substitute that expression right into t and at the same time, simplify those two numbers. So I have negative 29.4 minus 15 decimal three, and that is equal to negative 44.7. So remember, this t is now replaced with that, 52 minus 9a, and these two combined was minus 44 decimal seven is equal to 6a. Continuing forward, I'll bring that like term to this side, so 52 minus 44.7 is equal to 6a plus 9a, I have 52 minus 44.7, that's the left side of the equation, 7.3, and the right side is 15a. Now, dividing both sides by 15, that 15 and that 15 cancel out, 7.3 divided by 15 makes 0. Point, let's say 5 meters per second squared. As you can tell, this number is positive. And that's actually a really good thing for us because as mentioned before, if the acceleration that you find to be positive, then the assumption was right. Now, had you assumed that it would go counterclockwise, you would have ended up with a negative acceleration. 
And in that case, we can't simply reverse the sine of a to find the correct answer because of the system we're moving the other way, the frictional forces would have to be reversed. Had it been negative as well for both the clockwise and the counterclockwise calculations, then that would suggest that the system is not moving. And there you have it. That is how to calculate the acceleration of a double inclined plane when considering frictional force.